Excited to welcome Gonzalo Rodriguez to share the game with us. Coach Rodriguez has coached basketball at all levels for the last 32 years. The last 12 seasons, he has been an assistant coach in the ACCB League in Spain, one of the top leagues in the world. He is currently an assistant coach for Moncho Fernandez with Obradorio. Coach Rodriguez is here to talk about the next pick and roll defense. And you can learn more in a course available on CoachTube called Next Pick and Roll Defense. Coach Rodriguez, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Well, this is going to be fun. I mean, we're going to talk about something that I know a lot of coaches at all levels of basketball are intrigued by, and that's the next pick and roll defense. But before we get there, let's just get to the general topic. Can you explain the concept of random defense? Yeah. Well, uh, random defense is, is a concept that was born to give a solution to a big problem. And the big problem now is the pick and roll defense. So uh, we had this thought in our, in our coaching staff, which is uh, we cannot play the same pick and roll defense all the time. We cannot even repeat the same pick and roll defense in a consecutive place. So our, our question was how to organize the, the decision of the pick and roll defense. And at the end, we get to a point where we decide that the big man, the, the man who is guarding the, the, the screener, uh, you know, he may have the possibility to choose defense because uh, he, he has the information, you know, the scouting information and the game plan and whatever. And he also have, uh, you know, this, this feeling about whether the, the screen is, has quality, is a quality screen or not, or if the screen is, very far from the three-point line or not, or if his man is just rolling one way, the same way all the time, you know, he can, he can take that decision. Uh, he, he may choose the pick and roll defense. Obviously, mm, he can choose between the options that we give him uh, according to the game plan. So the way to, to make this decision is knowing where the pick and roll goes. Uh, so if they, the, uh, the opponent is running, let's say, a central ball screen and the ball goes to the side when there is one player, we have some words to advise the big guy that he can choose from two or three different differences. If the ball screen, if the ball goes to a, the place, the side when there's two guys, what we call full side, then there are some options that he cannot choose and others that he can use. So the main information is you know, tell the big guy defender, the screener defender, if the ball goes to the full side or to the single side. Obviously, the third option is if there's no single or full side, which is what we call moving blitz, which is when, you know, when there's one guy or two guys just moving, changing position at the same time that the pick and roll takes place. And now he has, in this, in this case, we have another word and he has other options. But random differences is this, is give different answer to the, to the same problem, which is pick and roll, uh, based upon if the ball goes to the single or full side, and also based upon the, the characteristics of the opponent, which are, let's say, uh, um, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, chosen in the, in the game plan, you know? So this is it. Basically, it's random differences is this. Love it. Love it. And uh, this is an, a way to adapt to modern offense, which is less predictable as well. And uh, mm -hmm. tremendous ideas. And uh, just to go back to this, then full and single are kind yeah. of your ways of determining where the ball screen is. And then based on where it is, the post, the player covering the screen can determine what the coverage is. Yes, exactly. We, uh, we uh, get to the to the thought that um, most of teams are prepared for certain pick and roll coverage and they use different alignments for each different pick and roll defense. So for example, if you uh, want to play hedge defense, what we call show defense, uh, most of times the opponent is going to play central ball screens to the full side because it's more difficult to have you know, this, the, the short roll or the deep roll well defended. Um, you know, some, day, some years ago, many teams used the concept of weak side and strong side to decide who guards the role. 
And we are not using this concept anymore. For us, there's no weak and strong side. It's full side and single side. And we want to help always from the full side because it's, there's two guys. So there's, you know, if you guard the role with one guy, there's still another guy who can do the X job or, or rotate or whatever. Uh, so, you know, if, if we uh, can understand what type of offense the opponent is running with the different alignments they have, then the way we have to act, not react, is you know, giving them different answers and they have to adapt. So in, in, in some other terms, some people would call it a two side and a, a one side or two side and a single side. That's what exactly. we're talking about in terms of full and single. And I love this terminology. So talk to me then, because I think the immediate thought for coaches is, well, this becomes complicated for on the ball defender, but you've simplified it by most of the time the on the ball defender goes over top of the screens, right? Exactly. Exactly. The on ball defender has two main responsibilities. The, the, the first responsibility is guard the rejections. This is, is uh, we always tell the guys that rejection is one-on-one -on -one defense. It's not pick and roll defense. So the first task, let's say, is guard, take the man, take the ball to the ball screen, send the ball to the screen. And then the second, the second um, goal is go over the pick. And we work on two different ways to go over the screen because we, we feel that, um, that all the tactic stuff works or doesn't work depending on the technique. So this is, you know, we, we have the main idea, we have the tactics in our mind, but then we spend a lot of time working in the small details of technique. So if the ball handler is already dribbling, we want to go over the screen one, you know, one way, if the ball handler is not dribbling, we, you know, we prefer another way because sometimes you can make the ball handler go a little bit far from the screen. So you create space and sometimes you cannot. So we use different footwork, but the goal is, you know, first goal is avoid rejection. Second goal is go over the screen in all pick and roll differences, except if the pick and roll is very high that we, we you know, have the option of going under and then if the repeat takes place, then we go over. We don't repeat under and under, except with, you know, exceptions based upon scouting. that are not very common because in, in, in the league we play, you know, you cannot go twice under the pick and roll to anybody. Uh, it's great stuff. I love rejection is one-on-one -on -one defense, not team defense. That's such a key part of this. And then just to clarify some more of this. So, if the ball goes to the full side, the call is full. If the ball goes to the single side, the full side corner calls blitz. Is that yes. okay? Exactly. exactly. And the blitz, the blitz can be, if we think about it in terms of shock or hedge, but sometimes it can be a trap as well. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. blitz, when, when, the, when the pick and roll defender hears blitz, for him is the sign that he can be more aggressive. So mm -hmm. he can hedge. But he can, he can use another, another defense. For example, if we are playing hedge defense, show defense, and the roller uses a short roll, maybe next time they play ball screen, we don't want to show. Maybe we, we want to play short show. Or maybe we want to play a little bit drop defense, right? But as long as the big guy listens blitz, one of the choices is hedge. One of the choices, for example. Other choices, you know, well, it's different. It, de it depends on the game. We manage three or four pick and roll coverages, and we choose from that. But blitz means that there's one guy ready to guard the role in case that is needed. If it's not needed because, you know, because we can handle the situation in two and two, then the big guy chooses a difference when we can handle in two and two. But, you know, for us, communication is, is very important. And, and communication is not talking. We are very strict with, with the words uh, because sometimes we demand the players to, to talk. And it's not talk. It's not speak. It's communicate. And in order to communicate, everybody must share the same language. And for us, there are short words, but very meaningful. And we, we don't demand the players to be yelling on defense the whole time, but they must use the correct word. In this case, blitz. 
That's a, such a great point, coach. I'm glad you said that because too often we think of defensive communication as just noise and it shouldn't be noise. It should be purposeful. It should be direct. And as you said, it should be a word that everyone understands. So there's clarity in that. So I love that very strict words. Uh, one other thing. So you mentioned then, which, which is very common when there's a lot of motion prior to the ball screen, sometimes it's hard to determine whether it's full or mm -hmm. um, the single side. So that's when you call last. Can you just explain exactly. that a little bit more? Yeah. Well, last is uh, a word that we use when we don't have, we don't know if the pick and roll is to the single side or to the full side. For example, imagine this central ball screen when there is another guy under the basket, just moving box to box, you know, moving from side to side. Uh, yeah, he, the ball, you know, it might be uh, full side or single side, but as long as there's one guy just moving the baseline, there's no such thing as blitz. There's no such thing as full or single. So in that mo in that case, for example, we call last. Other situation is uh, when just imagine, for example, a, a central ball screen and a pin down taking place or, a, you know, or a down pick taking place. Then we don't know if the ball goes to the single or full. So then if we have any doubt, for whatever reason, we must hear the word last. And last means, you know, it means for the big guy that he, he doesn't have anyone to guard the role in case that he chooses one, let's say, aggressive defense. It's great stuff. I love it. Now, getting into the basics of next defense, and I know another term that you use is hot, which will mm -hmm. start with maybe some general definitions. But the whole focus of this, as you say, is we want to act, not react. And I love mm -hmm. that. So maybe just as you explain next and hot, talk about we want to act, not react. Yes. Um, the thing is that you can take decisions on defense by being aggressive. If you are aggressive to the ball, then you're acting. If you deny a, a pass line, then you're acting, not reacting. But using tactical rules, you can also be acting. You don't need to be the most aggressive team in those particular situations of the game. So, for example, acting is um, that we give the players the option to use lateral help. So let's, let's, call it, let's call it that way. So in next defense, is a defense that we use when the ball goes to the full side. There are teams in the league and there are teams in Europe that they use lateral helps even when the ball goes to the single side. For example, it's very common to see uh, a pick and roll, central ball screen, or, or what we call reverse ball screen, and one guy in the corner. So the ball handle drives and there is automatic switch from the guy in the corner with the, def the defender of the ball. But we kind of, we, we use sometimes this type of defense, sometimes as an exception using the scouting. But most of times we use the next defense when the ball goes to the full side. So, because the first guy, let's say the guy who guards the player in the wing can, can help, can stop the ball. And then we can go to a two player or three player rotation. But this is basically it. And the reason why this takes place is to avoid the big guy having the responsibility of stopping the ball for one, for one second. And also is acting, not reacting, because the ball handler has to pass the ball. So when you, do, when you play this two-on-two -two defense, the ball handler can drive, can, can shoot a pull-up, you know, can do many things. But if you use the next defense or the, the, let's say the aggressive version of it, which is hot defense, then you force the ball handler to pass the ball. So for example, it's very helpful when you face a team with great individual players in pick and roll because you force them to pass. And it's also aggressive defense. I mean, you, it's an act, not react defense because you can choose who takes the shot. You know, you can take shots away from different players. Let's say you have a good shooter in the wing and not so good shooter in the corner. Then you can choose to play next defense and, you know, with a rotation. And at the end, you let the guy that you want to shoot. So a way of acting in defense is forcing the offense to take the shots from 
where whatever they don't want to shoot or whoever they don't want to shoot the ball. So this is acting different. Love it. And uh, just just again to simplify for coaches who are listening, the next defense is help stop the ball with the closest defender facing the ball. So basically that one pass away defender where the ball's coming. And essentially from there, it's a run and jump type of rotation, similar yeah, to that. Exactly. It's a scramble defense. Basically, yep. it's a scramble defense. But with, with the small details that makes you have more control of the scramble. For example, um, when we go into the rotations, how the players set their body, the chest and the hands, makes a difference to where the pass is going or how the pass is, 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 is going. So, for example, let's say that there is a pick and roll, lateral, central, whatever, to the full side. We don't make any difference between central and lateral. Once the ball goes to the full side, it's pick and roll to the full side. That's a matter of this, the, the work on the court. So, lateral ball screen or, or central ball screen to the full side. And we play next defense with the defender of the guy who is on the wing. This player must stop the ball. So, the defender of the ball goes and rotates to the wing. But the guy who defends the player in the corner is option for him, rotate or not. So if he rotates, if he rotates, he must talk and send the ball handle defender straight to the corner. But his mission is delay the pass because this wing corner pass, if it's too quick, there's no way that the player in, you know, who was guarding the ball arrives on time to the corner. So the way he sets the chest, body, legs, and arms is crucial because it makes a big difference. If the pass goes fast, straight, then it's going to be difficult to contest the shot or even play close out defense. So this is basically it. There's a lot of small details that makes you successful or not with this difference. So at the end, the basics are the answer to everything, you know, the defensive basics is, you know, it's the answer to everything. <laughs> well, I love it. And that's why we're here to talk about some of those details, which are amazing. And, uh, you know, the, the, the part that uh, you just mentioned, obviously rotate or not, I'm imagining that that depends on who, like if you have two on a side and you're the single player there in that temporary moment, you're rotating to the shooter, the best shooter I'm imagining. Is that how we're generally thinking it? Yes. And also the when. The when is important because there are we've we found two ways that the teams attack this type of defense. So one way is with a cut from the corner guy. If if the offensive player who is in the corner, the, 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 the let's say you know the guy who is initially in the corner decides to cut in the air time of the pass from the ball handler to the wing. Because if he cuts before, then we would call last, right? So there was no such thing as next defense. But if he cuts in the airtime of the pass, then we must advise there is a two-man rotation, two-player rotation. And sometimes with this happen, we decide not to rotate. We decide to fake and recover. It depends now on the scouting. The second way, Let's say there's three ways, because the second way is that is the player from the wing, the one who cuts. And the moment of the cut is when the defender of the wing is, is moving to stop the ball. So when the defender is moving one direction, if this player cuts, then the defender that is in the corner, then he has to make a decision. He can be stay with his guy and call for a two-man uh, uh, rotation, or defend the cutter, and then the rotation is longer. So those are details that are improved. You know, we have to improve that with the communication, basically. And the third way is with the guy in the corner screening his own defender, and the guy in the wing dropping to the three to the corner, three point nine in the corner. So depending on what the defense runs, we go to a two player or three player rotation, and because. We are running random defenses. If we play next one time and then the opponent reads and uses the cutters and whatever, maybe next time we just fake it. And then we fake the lateral help, but we, everybody recovers with his own, his own man. So there's no advantage. The thing is, like, like we mentioned before, not repeat the same defense. 
So the, the offensive team have to think, have to read all the time. And now you are taking the lead of the game because you are taking the pace, you're taking the decision and they must react to what you do. This is awesome. And you're showing the complexity of this. Uh, the, the problem and the solution is awesome to be able to talk about. Let's just focus on the simplest form of the next defense and not talk about any other coverages for a little bit, just so we can dive deep into the details, as you said. And uh, the one detail that I want you to talk about a little bit more is that player who's one pass away in help, the closest defender facing the ball. What is their angle of stopping the ball? And obviously the other part that you want them to be early in help. So they're not late to be able to stop the ball on the turn say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this player, we don't ask the player to be in, in, in the Nile pass line, but he can be in the pass line knowing that, you know, if there is a straight pass, he has a chance to play close out without a lot of disadvantage. Because at the end, all these different pick and roll coverage come from to solve a very big problem in pick and roll defense, which is the close out defense. So this player, this defender in the wing must be in a position where he can easily arrive to close out in case that he don't run next defense because he, he uses the lateral help if the driver attacks the basket. If the driver is outside the three-point line, there's no next defense. We handle that in two and two. When the perimeter player drives inside the three-point line, then we go to the lateral helps. And his chest must be in front of the ball. We, when we teach the basics of our one-on-one -on -one defense in precision, we tell the players, you don't have to be in front of the player. You don't have to be in front of your guy. You have to be in front of the ball, which is a little bit different. So once the players understand that the position is having the chest on the ball, in front of the ball. When we talk about next defense, it's easy for them to understand that they must do the lateral, the lateral help long enough to put, to put his chest on the ball. So if, his, if the defender is focused on stopping the, the player, many times he's not going to be on time. And his decision is going to be not helping, just faking him and going back to his own man. But if he understands that his chest must stop the ball, then it's easier for them to do that. And then we can use two different moves. I mean, if, if the player is athletic guy, is a big guy, then he can, he can use lateral slides. But in other situations with other type of players, we tell them to, to use the cross step and then sprint to stop the ball. So it's, you know, it depends on the quality and the athleticism of the players. If they can slide, it's okay. But if, the, if, if they cannot slide because they are small or whatever, they can sprint. They cross, cross a step and a sprint to set the chest in front of the ball. That would be it. And then the defender of the ball must, be, must go over the screen and to the wing. And in, in this situation, if he sees that the ball handle protects a little bit the ball and drives in the side instead of driving in front, then he can go and try to steal the ball from behind in his way to, to switch. So this is another small detail. I love that detail for sure. Like if the ball's ahead of them, they can get there. They can try and rear, rear contest, rear steer it, rear steer it, steal it. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so what is the on the ball defend or sorry, on the screen defender doing in these situations? They're in drop coverage. Yes, yes. He can be higher or, or deeper, but he he knows when we play next defense, he knows that the his main responsibility is guarding the role. Is his main responsibility. He don't have any responsibility for the ball handler. He cannot, he is not going to be the man who is going to guard the layup or the pull up or nothing. He must guard the roller. That's it. Which is one of the main advantages of the next defense, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, because many teams who play pick and roll to the full side, what they want is isolate one guy in the weak side. So the the, the roller, if the roller is guarded, you have open shot in the in the other side. So 
you know, he, there is a problem there with, with that because if you decide not to help, the role is going to be wide open under the basket. And if you decide to help, probably you're going to have a three-point shot. So with this next defense, you, you kind of solve this problem because you have this one-on-one -on -one defense, big guy against big guy. So he must take care of the role. That's it. So towards the full side, the ball coming towards the full side, that's mm -hmm. the strongest setup for the next defense. Yes, yes. Going exactly. to the single side is the most difficult rotation if you're going to next defense from there. So I'm wondering, do you rotate from the basket sometimes instead of just running that player through, they run back to the weak side? No. We, okay. The few times we use next defense when the ball goes to the single side is because the guy in the corner is not a dangerous shooter. Yes, okay. So okay. then his player is in a position where we call, we, we call it help given. Help given position for us in any pick and roll defense, in any type of defense, is that there is one guy who is already in a position where he is closing the gap in the paint or, I mean, in whatever place on the court. So you are just, you know, this is like kind of, Mm, psycho thing you know you have to play with the opponent's mind so if you if a defender is already closing a gap the guy with the ball he don't think he don't see the path to the basket very clear so he, you create doubts as well and then sometimes when the ball handler drives we just go straight to the pass line so the ball handler don't don't attack the basket so vertical you know so fast so this help giving is another concept that we use to create a little bit of confusion on the offense. And we use this concept when the pick roll goes to single side many times. I want to come back to one thing you said, just to highlight it, because I hope coaches didn't miss it, is this concept of whether, even if when you call next, you are not in next, we immediately just revert back to our standard defense if it's, it's above the three-point line. That's, yes. that's it, because there's no threat. That's the basic idea. Exactly. Is there any we, cue or it's just above the three-point line? No, it's, it's reading. Yeah. And the players that are not directly involved in the pick and roll, they must read if the pick and roll is, is creating a big advantage on the offense. Because sometimes the defender of the ball does such good work that no, no help is needed. And the thing is that when teams start facing this type of defenses, I don't know why the ball handler is less aggressive to the basket. He is thinking about the helps. So sometimes you don't need the help. And, so, and it works. And that's such an important point because we talk about that sometimes with switching that we automatically switch when sometimes we don't even need to switch. That's you know, it. We need to pick and roll. So the same concept yeah. applies here. So I'm so glad you made that point. I'm imagining the other part that coaches are wondering is if – if all screws up, you're just in drop coverage and pick and roll. If the, de if the defender one pass away did not, say, run and jump the ball, then it just becomes a drop defense. Yeah, well, we, we can use a, another type of defenses. For example, we can use, let's say, a short hedge, short show. Mm -hmm. Because in this defense, in the short show defense, the goal of the defender of the screen is the same. He must take control of the role, you know? So he may be playing short show and then other player can think that the ball is, because sometimes the way to attack short show defense for the ball handler is just hold a little bit the dribble, you know, just let the ball go a little bit high. And then when the big man recovers his, his guy, then he attacks. So it may be, it, this may happen. And this happens more in lateral ball screens and central ball screens because there's much, there's more space. So let's think about this. There's a lateral ball screen, the ball screen on one side, and the big guy decides to run short show defense, not, not drop defense. And the ball handler holds the dribble. Sometimes the big guards, they can hold his defender in his back a little bit, you know. And then when the big man retires because he is in need to guard the role, then they attack. So now in this moment, we can use next. But so, no, keep going. Keep going, coach. Sir. No, there is, this is easier to do if the lateral, if the pick and roll is lateral. If it's central, it's not, it's not so easy. It's not so easy. You don't have 
much space to do that. And it may be a little bit late if you decide to help. Uh, so the other part that you talked about at the beginning is this random defense. And I'm imagining that's what you want the screeners defender to do too, is to be variable in their level. That's kind of what you're talking about. Instead of just always being in one place, then it looks like you're going to be in next, right? Yes. Well, let's say that um, once you hear full, then many options open for the big guy defender. Sure. And he, he knows that next is one of them. But he may choose another defense, you know, and we still have the option of do the next defense because uh, next defense is not only for pick and roll coverage. You know, we use this defense, for example, when we guard people coming off screens. You know, if you guard the ball and you see that the passer is very far from the three-point line, we can use the same concept of it's like run and jump defense. So the next is not only pick and roll defense, it's something that we can apply in other situations on the court. And hot is same, with the same idea, but more, let's say more aggressive defense. And, and hot means you're trapping. Yes, hot is, in, the difference is that instead of doing the, the lateral help, let's say with the back parallel to the baseline, we do it with the back parallel to the sideline. And the moment is in the moment of the pick and roll, not after. Then we don't follow the rule of ball entering into the, into the three-point line or not. If we decide to run hot defense, it's like automatic for, for, for one moment, for a second, it's a trap. But it's not really a trap because the defender of the ball rotates immediately. You know, But the difference is that the ball handler is facing a guy just running to him. And sometimes it's in a su surprising way. So, you know, it creates, let's say it's more aggressive defense and it's much difficult to pass the ball in those situations. So you really stop the ball. You really stop the ball. So for coaches thinking about this, I mean, it doesn't have to be as complex as you're making it because really the screeners defender could literally have only two calls at some level, oh, yeah. either yeah. next or something else. And at Absolutely. your level, we need far more calls, but just so coaches understand that nuance of that, um, the screeners defender generally calls it, but as a coach, you can also call it, you know, based on scout, based on feel of the game, different things that mm -hmm. go with that too, uh, in terms of those things. Yes, absolutely. Um, we prefer that the, that the big guy calls the differences because he is the one who understands really what's happening on the court, because sometimes in the game, we in a timeout, we tell the big guys, hey, you should you should call this one in this situation, or you should call that one. And he may say, Well, you know, it was two times in a row that this guy played short role, so I decided to change a little bit or blah blah blah, whatever. So the thing is that we have to teach the players to make decisions on the court. And the better the decisions are, you know, the more successful is going to be the defense. If the coaches have to call all the pick and roll defense in a game, it would be, you know, it would be crazy. And also we may say, okay, now the next four plays, we're going to run this pick and roll defense. It doesn't work because if after that particular timeout, the opponent decide to uh, run different alignments, different goals for the pick and roll, then what you just said is not working anymore. So the only way that we can adapt the defenses is with a big man defender calling the defenses. And, you know, there is a simple way to, that, to do this. Obviously, we don't do this at the beginning of the season. We, we work in one pick and roll defense, we de develop, we work on it, and then we go to the second pick and roll coverage and we work on it. And then, we, then, then the big guy has two options, only two options. And then we may move on to the third option. And then he has three ways, you know, but it don't have to be complicated because sometimes in, in some games, in the game plan, we decide, okay, now we run, we're going to run these two differences the whole time. And the big plan is maybe we use, it, we use different differences in the second half or whatever. Or we may say with the point guards, we're going to run this defense, with this shooting guard, especially we're going to guard this one. 
So sometimes the big guy have not such a big room for, for his decisions. You know, sometimes we just make the decision smaller or, but the, the, the good thing about the random differences is, is, you know, the beauty of it is we ask the players to read in offense. Why not to ask them the same thing in defense? I, so they I have to agree. read as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. If we're going conceptual offense, it's conceptual defense, exactly the mm -hmm. same. That's it. That's great, coach. And I, I'm so glad you shared that concept about how you teach it, because I think that's another question that I was going to get to. And this mm -hmm. concept of, yeah, you build one and then you build another one and then you build another one. And it's these milestones that you reach where your players then can handle one, then you can add the second one. And it's not this just A, B and C and D all at once type of situation. No, no way. No, no, no. What we do is we work in the basics and defense and we make sure that our basics, what we, what we ask, what we demand on players as long as ball pressure or pass line or position uh, between the ball and the man or whatever thing, whatever basic we're working on, these basics have to make a lot of sense when you apply them to any other type of defense. We apply the same rules with the uh, low post defense, with the off screen defense, pick and roll defense. So we ask them the same type of technique and the same type of basics so we so we teach the basics at the beginning and then they have only to apply you know it's like building blocks they have to apply things and the way we teach them to go over a pick and roll has a lot in common with the way they we ask them to go over a screen or over a flare so the footwork is pretty much the same and it's, you know, it's the same idea over and over. For example, if, if, if you got pinned down the same way all the time, it's very easy for the offense to read it. But if you, if you apply this random concept to, the, to that particular offense, it's more difficult. You know? So players now must read if they can go over the screen, if they can go through the screen, if they can you know, press the ball or not. So at the end, it's all the same. We teach the basics. And then we start building the rest of the concepts. But the basics are, are the main part of our defense. It's great stuff. And uh, let's obviously talk about the usual mistakes when players are using the next defense. And that's this rotate too early or help is given too deep. Can you talk about those two things? Yes. For example, when, when the guy in the wing is a big man, the tendency, let's say a four man, a power four, the tendency of these defenders, I don't know why, is to protect them a little bit. They protect themselves a little bit. So they are too close to the pain. So this causes that, maybe it's because they don't, they don't feel comfortable doing these lateral helps at the beginning. They are not used to it. So they protect themselves too much. What happens is that they open a very easy pass line. And in the moment they want to contest the shot, it's too late. It's too late because contesting shots depends obviously on how quick and how long are the arms and whatever, but it also depends on if you give the information to the shooter too early. So if the shooter, before he catches the ball, knows that, that the shot is clear, then it's too late for you to contest because the decision is, has been made. So this is a problem. When the, when the defender in the wing is, is too deep, is not in a good position to help and in a not good position to, to make the shooter doubt about the shot. You know what I mean? And then it's a problem. It's a problem. You don't have to show the answer too early to the guy who is in the wing. You must create doubts. When he has the ball, he must think, do I have the shot? Do I have the extra pass to the corner? Or what do I do now? You know? So this is a problem. When, when this guy is too deep, this is a problem. Because the solution is very easy for the shooter, the guy who is in the wing. So this is being too deep. Rotate too early is... Now we picture the, the defender of the guy in the corner. So we play next defense. We stop the ball with the defender of the wing. But the ball is still in the hands of the ball handler. 
let's say, for example, we have, there are players in, in Europe that are very good players passing out of the jump. So they jump, they read, and then they pass. So, for example, if, if this guy is jumping and the defender in the corner thinks that the pass is going to the wing and he's already rotating to the wing, then you give an easy look to the corner. And then this jump pass is, you know, it's very easy decision for the ball handler. So that is rotating too early. So you don't have to rotate never with the ball in the hands of the ball handler. You have to rotate once the pass has been made. So we always say the same thing. You have to move in the airtime of the pass. If you move before the pass is too early. If you move after the pass is too late. So the airtime of the pass is very important moment in this defense. And that's how it's very important how the defenders involved, the two main defenders in the next defense use their hands. It's very important that the pass is late, slow. So everybody's half time enough to rotate. So is there any difference between using this against ball screen and using this against handoffs? Because I'm imagining this is a, a really effective defense against handoffs, which we seem to have less randomness to. Mm -hmm. Yes. For example, if you decide, if you want to play handoff defense with the defender of the, of the ball, a little bit, you know, guarding the paint, well, it, it, may, it may be a solution. But if the guy who gets the ball in the handoff is very aggressive, and, they, and he attacks the basket, you don't have always the time to, to play a lay switch, for example. And also, usually the handoffs are motion handoffs. So the guy who receives the ball is sprinting to the ball. That makes that his first dribbling is not to the basket, is not very vertical to the basket, is more to the side. So there you have an opportunity to run next defense because the, the, you know, the motion of the ball, the guy who catches the ball usually is not straight to the basket. It's, he drives a little bit to the side because you know, it's the energy of the movement. And then it's a good moment to, to run next defense. And then you don't have to use switches if, in case that you don't want to. You can handle the handoff in many other ways but next is a good situation because of that, because usually the first dribble after the handoff is away from the basket, not straight to the basket. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the ways that the offense tries to counter next pick and roll. And you already talked about one big one, which is cutters. And you yes. address that. Uh, another one is snaking the ball screen. Can you talk about what happens on a snake of the ball screen? Yes. Well, we found out that the next defense is probably the best way to guard a snake because it doesn't matter where the ball handle goes to one side or the other, you can always help with the guy in the full side. So if the snake is to the full side, it's very easy to do the next defense and switch. But even if the snake is to the single side, it's also easy because there are no many players who can drive in one direction and once they see the next, pass to the opposite direction. It's, it's a difficult pass and you have your defender going to that pass line. So we use this concept of next defense when every time we have to guard players who like to play the snake because if you play a two-on-two -two defense in pick and roll, the snake always creates doubts, always. And you don't know if you have to go to the late switch. If you switch a little bit early, then, you know, the pass to the roll is very easy. So we decide to, uh, you know, guard this snake defense in the next. And it's a good solution because of that. Then it doesn't matter where the ball goes, to the full to single or single to full. There's always one guy who has the responsibility to guard the snake, and he's the guy who guards in the wing. I had an NBA assistant coach text me this question about the pick and pop and going to the full side and then picking and popping back to the single side. I'm imagining based on what you said already, that's the big responsibility. That's it. There's yeah. no, 
it doesn't work. A pick and pop against this defense doesn't work because I think that there are two big strengths in this defense. The first one is that the big man defender has a very easy job. Very easy job. And he don't have to be so close to the basket. I mean, this guy don't have to be in a drop position, which is something that in the pick and pop is very difficult to guard. If you have the big man defender, you know, too low, too deep into the, into the paint, the pick and pop is, is very difficult to guard. But he can be even in contact with the screener. Sometimes we say just use the forearm, be in contact with the, with the roller because your only responsibility is the roller. Doesn't matter if the guy rolls straight to the basket, if the guy pops, or if the guy rolls to the opposite side of the paint because some, some teams, they play pick and roll and the roll goes to other side of the ball to create more room and they make for the passer easier the low pass for the, lay, for the, for the alley-oop. Doesn't matter. And, you and have sim- the roll, you have control. Yeah, and similar ghost screens, right? This this counters ghost screening because, again, the big is staying with the big. It's their responsibility. Exactly. And the ghost screen, then you, you have the option of not to help. You know, you don't have to do next defense because we always use this word, which is this sentence that is, if there is no pick and roll, there's no pick and roll defense. So rejection is not pick and roll. Ghost screen is not pick and roll. Sleep is not pick and roll. So pick and roll takes place when there is contact. If there's no contact, there's no pick. So there's no pick and roll rules. Uh, you know, sometimes a, a player is guarding the ball and the big man uses a slip or a ghost screen. And, you know, these players tell you, well, I thought the screen was coming. And you, you don't have to think. If, you know, if there's no contact, there's no doubt. And what happens is that when you take responsibilities away from the ball handler defender because they rely on the tactics, then you have a big problem. So I think that is a must to tell the players who guard the ball that they have a big responsibility on the ball, big responsibility. So, you know, they have to play the guy with the ball. They have to stay low. Some, some players, when they feel the contact with the screener, they just move up a little bit or they just want to roll, you know, to defend, go over the screen, just running, but they raise the body and run. And it's a mistake. And it's because, because that they must stay low and defend the guy. Sometimes if uh, we, many years ago, we had a player who was excellent doing, doing one thing. If he got a guy who played a dribbling pick and roll, he always took the guy out of the pick a little bit before the screen, he, you know, push a little bit and he was able to go over the screen. So in the game plans, he would say, with me, there's no pick and roll defense, no problem. Don't, you don't have to worry about the pick and roll. I handle it myself. If you have a player like that, that's, that's great. That solves all problems. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let's just have those players all the time on the floor. Coach, is there anything I missed with in terms of things that really give it, uh, you know, a bit of a challenge like the cutters and the snaking? What other things are, are, do you have to account for with the next defense? Well, the, 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 the concept of uh, last, the last defense, uh, you know, is, is, a, is, is a big problem when you face a team who plays with a lot of, a lot of motion. Mm-hmm. And the, the players must understand that uh, next is a decision, is an option, but it's never mandatory to do it. You know, they don't have to do it because sometimes they think that they must do it and there's no possibility to do it because when you can be ready to do next defense and in one second before, then you hear last and you need to, to guard your guy. And this may create a, a, some problem if there is no communication. Communication is, is big in this defense. It's, it's a, it's, you know, it's very, very important because if you decide to run next defense only when the pick and roll goes to the full side, then you have to know, to understand very clear the words, full, blitz, and last. Very clear. I have been encouraging some, some, some coaches that I work with to try this or to do this. And uh, they, they constantly are always worrying about the possible mistakes. 
And that's the wrong way to think about this, right? In terms of all of this, we should think about, well, the offense is going to adjust. So you have to adjust too. And that's where we started with this whole defensive variability and change, right? Exactly, exactly. I think that this defense doesn't work if it's the only defense you use. Because if you run next every time, it's really very easy to attack. But what makes this this defense uh, different and difficult to attack? That the offense doesn't know what's going to happen. Because sometimes you just run and jump in two players. Sometimes you do three players. Sometimes you fake it. Sometimes you don't. So at the end, the key is to mix the different situations. If there is one rule in your team that says that every time the pick and roll goes to full time to full side, you're going to run next defense, it's going to be easy for the offense to adapt. And, you know, going back to the start of the conversation, the random concept is, is the key. The offense have to think and they have to face changing situations all the time. So they cannot adapt. And once they adapt, then you have to run another different thing. And then you can go back two, three players after that. So you are always ahead because you are in, in their minds. You know, they are just, and it's, it slow down the player. It is what, what, what we said before. I mean, when, when you face players who are really, really, we, we said vertical guys to the basket, they are very aggressive driving. Uh, if you do a, a drop coverage and you play the late switch, they don't care about that. They score over your big guys. They force fouls, go to the free throw line or whatever. This defense slow them down because they cannot make the decision about, okay, I'm going to drive. I mean, I see the big guy dropping, then I'm going to drive. Because if the big guy is dropping, you may face another guy just going in your way. And you can have, you can, you can have steals and you can have offensive fouls. And at the end, you, you know, players lose the patience. I mean, there are some, in, in some games, we play against guys who are really, really mad about that because they were forced to pass the ball all the time. And, you know, something that the scorers don't want to, right? Definitely. You force them to pass the ball. Well, and that's, that's a part of this too, is the psychology for the ball handler that you're trying to make them uncomfortable and you're trying to make them think and you're trying to make them less aggressive. And only if you, if you only use this a few times in a game, they're still going to be thinking about this possibility yes. all the time when they come off, especially when it's, as you said, the big is in drop. Yes. Even if you use it one game and then you don't, don't, don't use it the next two or three games because the people is going to expect that. So yeah, it shows up in scouting play. report, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And it's a type of defense that force the opponent to work in, in, in practice against this defense. So they spend some time. You know, and there are mistakes in this defense, obviously, but it's the same thing when you run zone defense. You run zone defense and the opponent scores a three and the players look at you like, hey, they scored a three. And then you can tell them, yeah, against man-to-man, they score threes. <laughs> so, you know, you stick to it. There's, it's there's a great example. It's going to be mistakes. <laughs> but at the end, it's about make the opponent think. You know, it's not giving the same answer to the, to the same problem. And another advantage of the defense is that it forces the offense to run potentially pick and roll to a different way. If they're used to going to the full side, they might try and change and go to the single side, right? Exactly. Exactly. And then they are doing what you want them to do. So you're just taking the lead in, 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 the, in the pace of the game and in the, in the tactics of the game. Some, some teams, when they play against this defense, they decide not to attack to the full side. So their, their choice is, okay, we're not going to do that because... They do this defense very well, so we're going to run only this type of pick and rolls or whatever. So you're just taking away something from them. And then if you have the counter to that, if you have a good, solid defense, when the ball goes to the single side, then you have, you have a lot of uh, solutions for the game. So the, the concept of the hot, so trapping it, um, you've talked about the random part of it. Is that something that you encourage your players to call, you know, if you're using the next defense? Like sometimes it's not a read. Sometimes you just want to add that randomness or variability so the offense knows it's potentially there. Yes. In the last, in the last seasons, we, we applied less times the next defense 
we still use it, mm -hmm. but we use more times the hot diffings because for us, we found that it's more aggressive. It gives you more time to rotate. And it's a difference that you can apply in many, in many other situations. So hot defense really gives you a, a big advantage because it's, I mean, it's, it's a risk because it's not dropping, but, but the way that you stop the ball is more aggressive. And the distance to run, to recover and, and rotate are a little bit longer. But uh, it makes you, uh, well, it makes the opponent very, very uncomfortable. And so this is uh, something that is, it, it goes a step, a step forward the, the next defense, and it gives you completely different look, different look to the game. And the philosophy is the same. Uh, so when the ball goes to the full side, then players have the option. So they would say full, and if they want to run hot, in the moment they are sprinting to stop the ball, they are yelling hot. So everybody knows that from there, you know, the, the, the offense is going to be broken. And then we have to guard another, other different things. But it takes the, the, of the offense out of the regular pace, out of the regular um, um, balance, you know? And, but sometimes we use this defense not as a random part, but as, as, as a must. Uh, we, we did it sometimes with certain players and, you know, we said, okay, with this guy plays off a screen situation or when this guy plays, plays handoff situation, we're just going to hot. And hot guards you from the drive, but also from the shot, which is a big advantage, you know, because it's, it bothers a shooter that comes from a handoff or a pin down or whatever, just face a defender running like crazy to him. So it takes away also the, the, the jump shots. It's another advantage. Coach, this is awesome stuff. Uh, great detail. And I think we're removing for some coaches some barriers in their mind about how complex the next defense is. It's really, again, it's things that you already are teaching in some way, and you're just adding this one different variation to it. And that's great. Uh, coaches, you can go learn more. Uh, from Co Coach Rodriguez about the next pick and roll defense with his course titled the next pick and roll defense. And that is available on coach tube. And I really encourage you to go check it out. It's just a tremendous course and tremendous detail and, and gives a lot of video examples of this. And uh, coach, thank you for making that course. It's just awesome. Thank you very much. I, I'm really glad to, to share what we do uh, with other coaches and, you know, I'm, I'm very happy for, for having this course on the coach too, and people that have any questions about that or want to just ask something, get in contact, then my, my uh, email address is available. So I'll be happy to, to talk to other coaches and, and share the game. Yeah. Well, we love that. And we're grateful for you to be on this podcast as well, sharing the game. So thank you so much coach. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much.